Punch2 also can load Rex files or slice a sample, which could be a drum loop or percussion or whatever. A good example is this preset in the introduction bank called Brush Slide C. You see the value 120 beats per minute. So the originally the drum loop is on 120 beats per minute. And what I did also in the host sequencer is set the tempo down here, you see 220 beats per minute. So when I play down um, the audition button, it plays the built-in sequencer together with this loop play. So here we have Groove 1, which is using the built-in sounds. And if I click here the loop play, it plays back the slices, which are divided over eight pads. When I go to pad 19, this is the first slice. So here you see, this is the, um, the sample we use, which is a snare brush drum loop which is inside this selected inside the installed data and um yeah you can audition the sample here preview sample so this, this is uh, the original one and you see the original one has a bit lower in tempo and we increase the tempo and this is really depending on the the type of uh, loop you have or rex file how much you can change the tempo of it but then this one, if you uh, map it out, so this is mapped out to the pads, and i show you later on how this is done. And if you hit loop play, it plays back this using the pads, which you see down here. Maybe go back to the main page. Here you see it again. Yeah, and the cool thing is that you can combine this together. So you can combine the built-in sequencer, sequences of punch to together with the, uh, the sample loop or rex file, which you did uh, load in. Okay, let's go to a few things I like to show you how you can work with these slices. In the introduction bank, you can find a kit preset, which is called default slice. And you see all the pads have the same sound, basic sound, the default sound, which is a bass drum. But in this preset, I picked pad one and set this already to slice. So here you have pad one and each pad can be anything uh, from a bass drum, a snare to a tom or a clap. And if you want to work with slices, you need to pick at least one pad to start with being a slice. So once you select the slice, you can drag and drop uh, a sample down here, which is the folder and the folder where all the slices, uh, loops or rex files are located are, let me show you. So they are located on the PC on in the documents, Rob Harpen folder, punch to slice loops. So here you could drop them in and uh, or you could say really drag drop inside here and on the Mac it's inside the applications for pop and punch to slice loops so now this pad is set to slice and by simply clicking here on the loop or a rex file it loads in and you see this is a rex example and it already sets the point because the points are the the slices already inside the rex uh, file so once this is done and you see it has 10 slices, you can map this out. You can audition it here, preview sample. And you can say map slice and map slice means then that you can set, okay, I map these 10 slices to the pads and you could start at uh, pad one, which I will do now, but also could be something else, but let's start at pad one now. And now you have the slices, you see it down here, up to 10 are now here. Of course, the tempo is already displayed as well here, 120 beats per minute. And the sequence is also 120 beats per minute. So when I press now loop play, it plays the slices back using the pads. 
then of course we you have the option with your rex file to say oh let's combine everything together and yeah do some weird stuff put some grains on it and so. or take a um, different filter type and of course it's the case that if you have combined slices that it uh, edits all the uh, slices so it's a combined editing of all the 10 pads and now I added a high pass filter I can make all of them shorter so this combined slice is very important to use if you for instance want to edit all the 10 slice pads at once well that's one thing you need to keep in mind is that in fact, if you go to pad 11, which is now a base room, you still can say, oh, make this a slice. And then you could pick one of these slices here. So you could make you now slice two again. And then you play, for instance, on pad 11, you could pay, play this pad slice again using the built-in sequencer. So keep in mind that if you select here a slice, pad that um, if you change this also the whole sequence will change uh, so let me show you so now when I play play loop it goes to 10 and puts 11 so now it doesn't fit anymore so I have to put this one back to another sound and then and I go back again to pad one, it's again one to 10. So there's a lot of freedom where you can put these slices, but if you go outside the main uh, layout, which you do it by using map slice and take, pick here on different pads, also these slice, you get a bit of messy stuff. So be careful with that because each pad has the freedom to be also a slice. What is, of course, then also possible if you say, okay, this is nice, but I want to have the sequence five, again, slice number one, I can change it up here. Then it plays back the loop play, but then puts a different uh, slice on this uh, pad number five. So keep that in mind that there's a lot of freedom in how to work with these slices. Okay, well now let's do a, uh, a different uh, loop. So not a Rex file, but one of the built-in uh, samples which are percussion loops or drum loops. So here I go back and uh, again I start at the default slice and then go one into these uh, folders. I take for percussion, I simply take a bongo loop. So let's play it, I can audition it. And of course, with this, it's not a Rex file. So the points here, they are sliced according to a tempo. So now it's uh, uh, slices is on strictly one eight note. But you also could say now, okay, let's do it different. Uh, and slice it to one sixteenth notes. And then is of course, before you do map it out, is that you edit this as good as possible. For instance, I would say, okay, this slice is not on a good point. I move it this here, so I use the mouse. Number three, um, it's a little ghost note, I think, so I could use that one here. This one is good. This one needs to move a bit. And you see, just number eight, I don't use that one because it's a longer node. Number nine, I don't use, you see, and everything which I don't use, I delete. And once I have this set, I will map it. So now I do map slice again, and I will say start at number one. And then we have 11 slices down here. The tempo is also 120 beats per minute. and. Yeah, it's, uh, it should sound when I hit loop play. And here it is. So now it plays it back using the pads. And you can export this to MIDI. So you have it as a MIDI file. And of course you need to save 
the preset, if you say, okay, this is nice, I saved this already to uh, as a preset. Well, so there are different types, uh, different ways where you can slice this loop you did load. The, I use now the tempo mode, but there's also a, um, a even mode. And you see that changes again. Uh, there's a um, auto slice which uh, responds to the the transit and it depends on your loop which you are using and this one is also not bad at all you see this auto slice maps it into um, nine and um, and of course yeah, it's wise to first see how you like to map it out before you uh, map this of course I could say now again map slice because now I had the 11 ones which was before I I go again map slice and okay and you see that it resets it down so now it's again nine and so so once you did that you can continue in yeah doing your other stuff so of course what is the case is that each path you see you can add it and it's very important to know if you are on a path that you see Okay, keep in mind that I still can change here. So I could change path six with a different slice. So don't make mistakes in editing because yeah, they are not hardwired connected. There's a lot of freedom. And so what you can do here is of course, if you are on slice six and you click here the, with your mouse, you can audition it and you could say, okay, let's tune this one a bit lower. Okay. So now it auditions only the original. So I need to click on the, and then you have, so then you can start doing some weird stuff. So this is now, this band is selected and then this area is ruling it. So this is the area for each band. And I also could say, make it a bit shorter. So even shorter. Or I could say, because I'm editing pad six now to send it to an FX. And uh, most likely I don't have an FX here. So I pick here a reverb and then I go back to the advanced panel. So this is important to know that, that you need to edit the pad down here if you want to change, for instance, the tuning of this particular part or a shorter decay. And what I used before in the video is that, uh, is you also can combine slices so that if you added something down here, that it affects all the paths below it. But it depends on your workflow, how you like to use it. And then of course here in path six, you also could say reverse the slide. So then it reverses the slide and you see Let's see how it sounds, of course. And by moving around, right. you can make it a bit different. So you see, because it is reversed, that you need to move this number six to get it on a nice rhythm point. And that you see in the background, there's also a grid, which is on, um, if I'm not wrong, on 16th note. And if you use the command button down here, you have some additional features. And also if you use the right mouse button or control uh, mouse on your Mac, you can see you have all kind of uh, settings and the grid, it's now 16, but you also can have it on a different setting. You see this is 32, so it's up to you how you want to have that. Well, then there is this option, of course, if you have a preset, a drum kit preset inside Punch 2, that for instance, you can add it to the current Preset. So here I pick one preset, which is a Jumal preset. 
And this one doesn't use a slice uh, at all. So what I could do is check here. Okay, hmm, let's maybe replace the last eight pads. So I could go to pad number 17, and instead of using there the sample, I pick slice, and I could say, okay, let's give it a try and go, let's see, I go down here, percussion, we are all kind of percussion, and um, yeah, let's take a um, Kachiki loop, let's see it. The tempo is of course a bit lower than what we had. This he has 130 beats per minute. Down here I'm at 120. And this could be maybe a bit out of tempo. But when I look at the slices, uh you see it slices here on tempo, but I could say mm, outer slice, see how that goes. Mm, that could be an option. Or you say tempo. And I will prefer tempo. And I would then now add it a bit. So I would take, for instance, here, this one. And now the grid in the background is uh, 132 uh, grid. Five I don't need. So I use the right, right mouse button to delete the slice. And by the way, if you click here on info, you can see how the things are. Okay, and then seven, I don't think that one is needed. And five, I move more here. So essentially, you see, I use six. So what I would do then is count down six from uh, 24. So I need to start then on, so one, two, three, four, five, six on uh, pad 19. And then I say map slice and starting on pad 19. Okay, so maps it out now to this 19. I need to pick it again because that's 18. Oh, I was editing on 17, but it's uh, back to what it was. So in 19 until 24 are the slices now. Okay, and now I go to the main page and there I have down here, you have the audition and I pick the loop. So now also place the loop and just let's see how this sounds. And you see, it plays nicely. So let's put a bit. So it depends on the loop you load or the Rex file, how it is with a different tempo. Now it's still 120 beats per minute. So this is how you can add and also slices into a, a, a preset which already has a lot of stuff going on. Of course, what you have to keep in mind is that these six pads here are now the slice pads. And it could be the case that the patterns, the drum patterns also use slice pads because originally there were different sounds. So you need to check here if nothing is then playing by using the built-in sequencer. So I'm checking it here, and as it looks here, oh, here this one breaks, uses slides, and that should not be the case, of course. Um, and this also, and break four, also has a slice, and that should not be the case. Of course, you can also use, trigger the slices uh, by using the built-in sequence, but we have, of course, the built-in loop play, which plays the slices back using the pads. And um, so, yeah, this is a very nice way to um, to combine an, uh, yeah, a current presets together with some new material, and it's fun. And uh, so when I press Audition here, you have Groove 1 and Groove 2, and this slice loop playing. So this way you can really do some cool stuff already.